all. Yes. <laughs> I was just looking at this criminal sentencing in the state of Washington. Yeah. A determinant uh, sentencing system. Yes. <laughs> Under the determinant sentencing system, uh, offenders convicted of felony crimes are sentenced according to a uniform set of guidelines. <laughs> now, the purpose of the system is to assure that those sentenced for similar crimes and who have comparable criminal backgrounds receive similar treatment. <laughs> Now, uh, these guidelines are based on the seriousness of the offender's crime yes, and the offender's criminal history. <laughs> now, a judge can depart from the guidelines, but only if compelling circumstances exist and <laughs> only sentences imposed outside of the guidelines can be appealed. <laughs> Now, uh, all convictions, yes, adult or juvenile, include mandatory penalty assessments, which are deposited in the state's victim compensation fund. <laughs> A judge may also order the offender to make restitution to victims for damages, <laughs> loss of property, and for actual expenses for treatment of injuries or lost wages. Oh, <laughs> those convicted of misdemeanors may be given probation and or time in a local jail. Violating the terms of probation can result in a longer jail term. <laughs> now, I know this two-count criminal co offense is yeah, the serious crime per se. Papoach. <laughs> you know, uh, the seriousness of the offender's crimes. <laughs> well, considering I wasn't in Brennan, Washington, and I didn't commit any crimes, and I put that on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> And I didn't email any of the individuals that my wife happened to be working with, coach. But I did email the Department of Justice uh, thousands of times. Yes. <laughs> now there's that criminal history. I've never been convicted of a crime. Oh, <laughs> seemed to be some problem with the admitting of evidence when arresting me. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't in Squim, Washington. <laughs> but you made me have a mental health evaluation, and you said I was... Uh, <laughs> some sort of spectrum bipolar or schizo schizophrenia, psychosis. <laughs> and uh, in 25 minutes, that employee from Western State Hospital, he was absolutely sure because I told him, I said, you have no jurisdiction to do this. And he's looking at me, well, the guy's obviously bipolar. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> But I've been I've been on trial in Jefferson County for over a year now, wasn't it August? It's August 24th, and you arrested. Oh, you had the arraign. You had the truck. You, you on August 21st of 2017 when I'd emailed law enforcement wanting the actual notice of the state of jurisdiction. Yeah, <laughs> you decided. Well, we're not going to give him notice of court hearings. He obviously knows about it. He's emailing the sheriff's department. <laughs> But we'll just wait and we'll arrest him for a failure to appear. We'll transport him across county lines. We'll put him in oranges and we'll video rain him. And then when he talked to the judge, he's like, well, why don't you read it? <laughs> read the protection order. You can see that she didn't sign it. <laughs> but every time I went to trial, you said I was mentally ill, mentally defective. I had to have restoration treatment. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm talking about. Pooch. Obviously, I'm delusional <laughs> when it involves uh, multiple signatures. <clears throat> exactly who was it that served me in the Squim Public Library, and who did you serve after you served me? Yes. And this whole concept of the requirements of the law, I know the prosecuting attorney's absolutely sure that I was in Brennan, Washington. That's why we're going through the restoration. Yes. And their whole thought was, well, we'll make sure that he's administered psychotropic medication against his will. Yes. And we'll put him in a mental institution because he doesn't understand what he's doing. <laughs> it, I don't understand what I'm doing. <laughs> Now, let's see. <laughs> Is there some reason why you wouldn't require the petitioner's signature? I mean, I think that, Jack, you really didn't tell the Phyllis. Yes. Remember that child abuse? Do you want to see a forgery? Oh! <laughs> What if I called her on the stand as an expert witness? <laughs> Phyllis, do you see any difference between these two signatures? Are you sure there's no fraud on the court? Oh, fraud on society. Ooch. Fraud on the population. I mean, depending upon the number of videos that have been seen by any individual where they never noticed there was no views. Ooch. I would think I could get their driver's license for every police officer in every city of the United States. Every sheriff. Yes. Every FBI agent. Yes. 
Did you, on or about June 16th of 2017, watch the videos that I made <laughs> while sitting right here, where allegedly I was in Brendan, Washington on that day? <laughs> now, it's just not those that I emailed. It's every person that actually watched the videos, <laughs> watched any videos since that time. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that I could call a million individuals to testify on my behalf that I wasn't in Brennan, Washington. Then we have the big question of cyber stalking. Yes. <laughs> now, I have approximately a million eight hundred thousand emails, but there's a there's about well, maybe two to three thousand different email addresses. <laughs> of course, it could be up to ten thousand. E Do I need to email somebody else? Based on my criminal history, yes, exactly what sentencing were you going to give me?